fucking again. Um, here, let's look at. I watched Robert F. Kennedy Jr. on Joe Rogan yesterday, and it gave me an opportunity to look into some of the old school anti vax claims. First, Joe Rogan lets us know that he used to think RFK Jr. was kind of loony, but now he's a true believer in RFK's anti-vax claims because Joe Rogan is now kind of loony. Okay, let's take a look. When I had heard of you in the past, before I had read your book and before I'd met you, I had no information on you, but there was this narrative, and this narrative was you were anti-vax and you, were, you believed in pseudoscience and you were kind of loony. I didn't look into it at all. I just took it at face value because that's what everybody had said. And in my mind, vaccines have been one of the most important medical advancements in human history, saved countless lives, protected children. And I, I thought very strongly that they were important. I didn't have any information on that either. This is also just a narrative that I've adopted from cursory reading of news articles and you know, not really getting into the subject at all. Then the pandemic happens, and I had quite a few very reasonable, liberal people, rational people, people that I, I trusted their mind, recommend the real Anthony Fauci, your book. And I'm like, Robert Kennedy wrote a book about, the, about Anthony Fauci? Like, what is this going to be about? Like, this is my initial reaction. You've got this, what I perceive to be a kind of fringy thinking you know, almost conspiracy theorist type person that's not based in fact with their argument. Bro, Joe Rogan literally is, like, he's just as dumb as he always was, even back then. Except the difference is his stupidity caused him to, like, believe the right thing back then. And his stupidity is now causing him to believe the wrong thing, okay? Same guy. Like, oh, I was just unquestioning of the narrative. It's like... Yeah, that's a problem, but, like, at least back then, your, your unquestioning loyalty to, like, legacy media caused you to believe uh, the, the correct thing on accident. It was, and he had written a book on Anthony Fauci, so I, I had I'd seen numerous interviews with you, and, you know, uh, you seemed very reasonable and very rational. And then I was like, is this possible that this is the guy that's telling the truth? Is this possible that... Am I allowed to write the same shit twice? Sorry. He was just a Twitch employee in his own chat and arguing and harassing him until Harris Heller banned him? And the employee banned him? So, oh, bro, that's like drama from like four days ago. Yeah, you can't ban staff. That everyone that I know that had these strong opinions of you, that most of them at least, were like me. They had formed these opinions through this, uh, a Yeah, and the streamer himself said it wasn't harassment, it was just annoying. What do you mean? Believing legacy media is the right thing? Oh my god. No, legacy media lies to you all the fucking time. Okay? All the time. The difference is, he had no critical thinking skills back then... And he has no critical thinking skills now. And like, he accidentally at the very least believed in the correct information back then. And he just doesn't, he doesn't understand that he believes in the wrong shit now. But the consistency there is his uncritical, unquestioning loyalty to whatever fucking narrative is presented to him. Glance at a headline... Someone talking about you on a, on, a, on a television show. Before getting into the vaccine stuff, did you know RFK Jr. also believes that cell phones and Wi-Fi give you cancer, damage your mitochondria, and give you a leaky brain? That's the kind of guy we're dealing Wi-Fi with. Wi-Fi radiation is, uh, does all kinds of bad things, including causing cancer. Wi-Fi radiation causes yeah, cancer? Yeah, from your cell phone. I mean, they're cell phone tuner, tumors. You know, that, I mean, I'm representing hundreds of people who have cell phone tumors behind the ear. It's always on the ear that you favor with your cell phone. Oh, um, and, you know, we have the science. So if anybody lets us in front of a jury, they, it will be over. You know, we, so the, what, is the, what is the number? Because a lot of people use There's cell a phones. lot of people with it. They're glioblastomas. That's the kind of cancers that they get. 
But cancer's not the worst thing. They also, you know, it opens up, Wi-Fi radi radiation opens up your blood-brain barrier. Wi-Fi radiation. Seems real. Um, Joe's initially skeptical, but does a rigorous fact-checking by having Jamie pull up a website by Crackpot Org that works with J or RFK Jr. Environmental Health Trust, which repeats the oh, same claims. Joe's convinced. We got to get rid of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is doing to us, since it's everywhere, and since everyone's experiencing it, including you. What do you think it's doing it, to us? I think it degrades your mitochondria, it, uh, and it you know opens your blood-brain barrier. Do you, do you see anything online of how it could open up your blood-brain barrier? I, I don't know about how, but I... That it does? Found, I mean, I, don't, I found an article. I was trying to find the validity of it, but it has a statement on here. Damage that. the blood-brain barrier. Radiofrequency radiation exposure has been shown to affect the permeability of the blood-brain barrier as well as altering the expression of microRNA within the brain which researchers state could lead to adverse effects such as neurodegenerative disease. Whoa. How come we don't know that? And there's a doctor that did a study and said that it's been expanded on researches in China, and there's a published article here, but I was looking around at the page. And hey, they call it leaky brain. The findings... Whoa. They pulled that shit up, Jamie. Jamie, what the fuck are you pulling up, dog? You're supposed to be the normal guy. Bullshit. I know the people who did research on opening the BBB using micro bubbles and RF. That's not Wi Fi. And you can't do it without micro bubbles. What? RF using micro bubbles can open the BBB, not Wi Fi, and not without micro bubbles. Bro, I don't even know what the fuck you're saying right now, Fizz. I trust him. He's got a PhD, but. I have no idea. You might as well be speaking a different language right now. Oh, the blood, bl blood brain barrier. Things were followed by suppression, misinformation, and a shutdown of government funded yeah. research in the United yeah. States. It's the same as same play. Oh, we got to get rid of Wi Fi. <laughs> Dude. Um, RFK Jr. claims are a bit different from the COVID conspiracy content I usually watch because at least John Campbell, Brett Weinstein are churning out fresh bullshit every week. RFK's thimerosal in vaccines causes autism. Theory has been debunked for decades. Now, this is in the pocket of the Hasanabi Brain Trust, okay? This is my shit. This is extremely my shit because it's old school, and we've covered it a million times over. You know who else has covered it very adequately? As a matter of fact, H. Bomber guy. This is like Andrew Wakefield era uh, nonsense. But here it is anyways. So CDC hired a... Um, a, a Belgian epidemiologist named Thomas Verstraten, and they opened up the vaccine safety data link, which is the biggest database for vaccines for HMOs. All the the top ten HMOs have all their records in there, so they have all your vaccination records and all your health claims. So you can do these kind of cluster analyses. And Verstraten went in there and he looked at one thing. He looked at children who got the hepatitis B vaccine within their first month of life and, and compared those health outcomes in children who did not. In other words, children who got it after 30 days or didn't get it at all. That was the second cohort. And what he found in his first run through the data is there was an 1,135% greater or elevated risk for an autism diagnosis among the kids who'd gotten it in their first 30 days. That Okay, correlation does not equal causation, number one. Number two, here's why the number of children diagnosed with autism skyrocketed since the 90s. It's very easy. And the only reason why I know about this is because I worked with kids with autism in college and I worked with their parents, okay? It's because... It's not because, like, there are external factors or something in our diet that changed dramatically or fucking vaccines or anything like that. It's literally because diagnostics. That's it. There's also plenty of women that also have autism. We like to joke around and say it's called girl autism. But 
the way it manifests itself in women is still relatively less diagnosed, which is why autism is primarily in the way that has been diagnosed in the 90s, almost exclusively in boys. Okay. That's it. The first guy who got diagnosed with autism just died. Yeah. And if you are autistic, you might have even, uh, you might have even like noticed that your family members might also have, uh, might also be on the spectrum, just not diagnosed. That's it. It's awareness and diagnosis that has caused uh, the number of diagnosed boys to skyrocket. That's it. Nothing else. A lot of people were on the spectrum. The spectrum has always been relatively wide, but people were not being diagnosed with it because people didn't fully understand it. At that point, they knew what caused the autism epidemic because a relative risk, they, it, it's, a, it's called a relative risk of 11.35. A relative risk of two is considered proof of causation as long as there's biological plausibility. A relative, um, the, the relative risk of smoking a pack of cigarettes a day for 20 years and getting lung cancer is 10. This was 11.35. He's trying to say that you have a higher likelihood of being autistic as a consequence of the vaccines than getting lung cancer if you smoke a pack a day. That is an insane statement. That's it, bro. It's a random sample, so the increase in testing would equally be represented in both populations. Motherfucker sounds like he breathes anything but air. He has like a lung, or, or he has a, a vocal cord uh, condition. Anyway, let's continue. Um. And then he nefariously conspired at a conference called Simpson Wood to cover it up, and they wouldn't have got they would have gotten away with it too if RFK Jr. hadn't exposed them by publishing the transcript of the and meeting. Throughout the industry, this you know, as people heard about this study, the CDC wanted to do a meeting with all of the big panjerums of the industry. But they didn't want to do it on CDC campus because then they thought it would be subject to a freedom of information law request. They wanted to do it to keep it secret, so they. They found this retreat center, a Methodist retreat center in Norcross, Georgia, called Simpsonwood, and they assembled, I think there was 72 people there, and they were from the WHO, CDC, NIH, FDA, um, and all the vaccine companies, and all the big academics, the people who basically develop vaccines in the academic institutions, and they were all there. And they spend the first day, they, they give them all a copy of the first round of study, but they have to give it all back because they don't want it out there. And then they spend the second day talking about how to hide it. And um, How do you know this? Because somebody made a recording of it, and I got a hold of the transcripts. And I published excerpts from those transcripts in Rolling Stone, and anybody can go... Here is Gorskin's article from a decade ago going over these claims in detail. In summary, A, no, the verse state and study doesn't show that. And B, RFK's evidence for the grand conspiracy at Simpson Wood is one out of context quote. The general theme with all of RFK Jr.'s scientific claims are A, he takes correlations and observational studies, especially pre-controlling for confounders, to be conclusive evidence of causation. B, he ignores studies that show he is wrong or claims they are fraudulent. If you actually look up the studies he mentions, it's trivial to find how he absurdly misrepresents them. E.g., he claims the Burbacher Burbacher study shows thym thymorosal only appears to be processed out of your bloodstream because it's accumulating in your brain. And then an NIH act. So anti vaxxers ultimately engage in. How are these motherfuckers on Rogan, but you're not? I mean, he's running for president. And he's, like, directly in the pocket of Joe Rogan and his interests. Like, Joe Rogan has been a, a delusional anti-vaxxer. Remember the ivermectin arc? Which, by the way, they will 100% talk about. Um, He's looking for motherfuckers who agree with him. So, that's it. That's the thing. 
I think it's really interesting though that um I think it's really interesting that uh Joe Rogan or at least Spotify went from being like, man, we gotta punish Joe Rogan for doing anti vaxxer conspiracies to just straight up giving up on any kind of restriction or regulation on that front. They were like, all right, everybody shut the fuck up about anti-vaxxer stuff, so who cares? Nobody, nobody cares anymore. Actually then commissioned a study. And they, because they, at that point, they were really trying to figure out, you know, whether this was dangerous. And they commissioned a very famous scientist called Thomas Burbacker up at the University of Washington, Seattle to do a study with monkeys, with macaques. And he did the same study Pichiero did, but he did something you can't do with children, which he then killed the monkeys. And then he looked for the mercury, and what he found was the mercury, yes, it left their blood immediately. The, the ethyl mercury from the vaccines was gone from their blood in a week. The methyl mercury from the tuna fish was there two mo- a month later, two months later. <clears throat> but when he... Oh, God. When he clears his throat, I'm like, oh, finally. Nope. Sacrificed the monkeys and did postmortems. He found that the mercury had not left their body. Instead, the reason it was disappearing from their blood is because ethyl mercury crosses the blood-brain barrier much easier than mer- methyl mercury. The ethyl mercury from the vaccines was going directly to the brains of these animals, and it was lodging there and causing severe inflammation. No, he's not pretending to sound like this. He's just sick. The actual is that he compares thimer- thimerosal to organic mercury and finds a much lower brain concentration of total HG was observed in the thimerosal monkeys compared with the MEHG monkey. Moreover, the total HG is cleared much more rapidly from the brain after thimerosal. I don't even... Thimerosal? Okay, whatever. I don't fucking know any of this shit. Um, he claims remdesivir killed 53% of Ebola patients, and yet the... Inveterate psychopaths of the CDC decided to give it to COVID patients. Africa, in 19, so right before the pandemic, Fauci had remdesivir in a, in a, in a Ebola trial with four other drugs in Africa. And the IRB, the, the, you know, the safety panel, that, you know, you have to have a safety panel um, for, it's called the Institutional Review Board for every clinical trial, the safety panel stopped, stepped in and pulled remdesivir out because it was killing so many people. It was, it was killing more people than Ebola. Ebola kills 53% of the people who get it. And this, and the remdesivir was doing worse. So why would you take that out of an Ebola, that got thrown out of an Ebola trial and give it to people? Because they want to kill people, duh. It's so dumb. Everybody knows this. Obviously, this isn't true. Oh, well, fuck. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> He's just citing the percentage of people who died in the remdesivir arm of the Ebola trial. They died from Ebola. Remdesivir is ineffective against Ebola and probably also COVID. He claims a DTP vaccine is extremely deadly based on one cherry-picked correlational study. Here's a full discussion of his claims. In, in like 1979, they... Uh, they brought on a, a vaccine called the diphtheria tetanus and pertussis vaccine. And that vaccine was very dangerous. And it was killing one out of killing or giving severe brain damage to one in 300. Yeah, you don't. As someone who studied autism, schizophrenia, and the neurobiological and genetic level as a postdoc, ASD is genetic. I say it from my anecdotal experience working with children, uh, boys with autism, and their parents. But uh, yeah, it's. Like, you can't, I don't think you can get autism, dog. Like, I don't think it works that way. Like. Yeah. If you could get autism one way or another, I would have gotten it. Okay. Are your hairline kind of sussy right now? By that, did get a silly. Kids, and it was pulled in the United States. Listen, we've done studies on me having autism. It was pulled in Europe, 
and it, but Bill Gates still gives it to 161 million African children every year. The same vaccine? The same vaccine, and to South Asian kid, kids. And I'll tell you, you know, we now know what that does. As it turns out, they had 30 years of data where half the kids were vaccinated and half the kids were not between two months and five months of age. So it was a perfect natural experiment. And they went in there and they looked at it. They looked at 30 years of data and they found the girls who got that vaccine, the DTP vaccine, had um, had uh, 10 times or were 10 times more likely to die over the next three months than girls, than children who did not. And they, they weren't dying of diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. They were protected against those by the vaccine. They were dying of anemia and bilharzia and malaria. Bro, you, oh God, I don't want to be ableist so bad, but it's so fucking hard. It's so hard, bro. It's like you're talking about kids dying. You're dying. You're literally dying while you're trying to talk about kids dying, man. It's so fucking hard for me to be like, dude, what you don't you don't seem to be describing a clean bill of health. He thinks AZT, the first antiretroviral for HIV, was highly lethal and just pushed by big pharma for profit. No, AZT monotherapy was highly suboptimal. And early dose levels were too high, but it still was better than nothing. Um, eventually, we get into COVID and COVID vaccine conspiracies. They're all perfectly familiar. Ivermectin was suppressed so the vaccines could get emergency use authorization. They had to describe The funniest part about this always is like, why? Okay? Why? 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 What is the purpose of the government like mass vaccinating and like killing gigantic swaths of the population what is the reason and if your goal is like oh man it's because like big pharma is going to make money it's so stupid because why are they making money that way why are they making money that way they already make money by fucking if you this is why i love certain pharmaceutical conspiracies ones that make sense like oh they have a vaccine for cancer but they just won't reveal it to you because the treatments are more expensive or same with like HIV AIDS. You know what I mean? It's like not prep, but um, there's actually a way to like perfectly cure it, which ironically uh, the RDNA uh, stuff, like the, the same, the same type of vaccine research that came from COVID actually is currently being utilized to potentially, uh, uh, you know, cure HIV AIDS. The R the MRNA, I said RDNA, sorry, MRNA uh, vaccines. Um, God, I'm, I'm getting, maybe I, you can get autism from not autism, but maybe you can get stupid at least from fucking listening to this guy. Uh, oh, like there are conspiracies that I do like in the pharmaceutical, uh, in the pharmaceutical side of conspiracies, like fucking they just don't want to give you the real cure. Like they want to fucking treat the illness because that's extended. And, you know, they that way you can make more money. Okay. And it like kind of ties into, I guess, kind of ties into fucking people you know, holding on to patents and, and trying to extend patents and how much of how much research and development funds go directly to that. So that kind of stuff is fun. But like, when you say like they're trying to kill everyone they can like forcibly inoculate, it's fucking stupid. It's just so stupid. Hey, Chopo Trap House, thank you for the raid. Credit Ivermectin. Because, you know, uh, because there's a federal law, the federal law, the emergency use authorization statute says that you cannot issue, you cannot issue an emergency use authorization to a vaccine if there is an existing medication that has been approved for any purpose that, ha that is demonstrated effective against the target illness. So they had to destroy ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine and discredit and they had to tell everybody it's not effective because if they had acknowledged that it's effective in anybody 
the whole $200 billion vaccine enterprise would have collapsed. They had. Yeah. I love this theory because it's so iconically convoluted. The FDA organized the conspiracies of hundreds of scientists to run fake, intentionally underpowered clinical trials internationally, by the way. Not just intentionally, but also internationally, there were clinical trials being run that also had the identical fucking results, weirdly enough. Because it's always like, that's why like conspiracies are always so fucking awesome. Because they, it's just like when they were talking about COVID deaths being fake, you had to get every single doctor and nurse to be on board with this global international conspiracy where they were intentionally increasing COVID death numbers, which literally led to shutdowns, which included shutting down certain wings of the hospitals that made them actual money in profit-seeking healthcare uh, industries uh, in, in countries like the United States. And, it's, and it also happened in places uh, in OECD nations where they already have socialized medicine. So like they, like even on the capitalist side, they shut down hospitals and, and shut down elective surgeries, which is how they made the money, like the biggest money maker for the hospitals. But also, so that's weird. So there's no profit incentive on that front, even in a capitalist country. But also, what about all the other countries where there are, you know, where there's so socialized medicine? Even then, they were like, no, they were all in on it. They were all lying. They were all collectively lying about COVID deaths. He enjoys playing bizarre word games like insisting vaccines are the only drug. They don't have to be safety tested before approval. It's trivially false, and everybody knows it. Vaccines are extensively tested for safety in clinical trials. If pressed on it, he would probably move the goalpost to insist that all of the post-marketing surveillance done to detect Rare adverse vaccine effects should be done before appro uh, approval, which is impossible. He favors a popular make ridiculous extrapolations about all cause mortality from the initial clinical trials approach. Also, here's the other thing. If that's the case, why did they shut off? Why did they stop using one type of vaccine almost instantly for a brief moment? when they suspected that it could be possibly causing some adverse side effects. Oh, they did that to, like, make you falsely believe that, uh, you know, the government actually has your best interest in heart. That's what it was, right? Is that what it was? Because it wasn't killing enough people? Yeah. That's the, that's the old double bluff. Yep. Vaccine conspiracy theories just completely disregard the fact that there's hundreds of thousands of regular researchers that pour their entire lives into understanding these things. Yes. And not only that, but also, like, billions of people got this vaccine, man. What happened? They say so many unhinged shit that never comes to fruition. Like, we were all supposed to die. And that literally never happened. And then we just like kind of forgot there were millions of Americans who quite literally believed that half of the country was going to die. Okay. That's the kind of environment. That's the kind of mental space that we were existing in. Like we kind of have forgotten, but... You know, it's been a couple years. And they kept pushing the death number back. Like, they were like, oh, you're going to die in a month. You're going to die in two months. You're going to die in three years. You're going to die in four years. You're going to die in five years. And it's like, and they still kind of go with that narrative. They've just moved the goalposts away from... Uh, they move the goalposts away from like, oh, they're going to die to like a couple athletes. Uh, you know, a couple athletes actually died suddenly. And half of those guys didn't even fucking die. They just claimed that they did. 
Oh, he favors the popular make ridiculous expa- extrapolations. Um, the tea leaf reading the statistically insignificant variation in all cause of deaths in those studies is meaningless. Post marketing surveillance uh, VSD and all large scale studies find significant COVID and all cause mortality reductions due to the vaccine. For fun, here's one nonsensical claim he makes about how they claim 100% vaccine efficacy. They do because two is 100% out of one. Anyone have any clue who made the claim he's supposedly refuting here? I think my man is very confused. What? So. Another bizarre claim that some evil science is purposely overdosing patients with hydroxychloroquine to kill them to make it seem like hydroxychloroquine doesn't uh, work have been charged with homicide. What? They're on our, you know, there's, there's over 100 studies on ivermectin. Oh, so like your doctors who were prescribing hydroxychloroquine they're good. They there are good doctors that are prescribing hydroxychloroquine, and then there are some bad doctors who were prescribing too much hydroxychloroquine to kill people, so people would stop using hydroxychloroquine that good doctors were promoting. Got it? That's the 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 patriotic doctors were taken down by the bad black hat doctors who were purposely fucking trying to kill people with hydroxychloroquine. And you know. I- I think they're on our website, on CHC's website. And then there were a series of studies, and this is what they always do, this is what they did with autism. They designed studies to fail. So they, you know, in fact, they designed studies, and the way they designed them to fail is by giving... I love this because you can't fucking counter this, okay? If you, if you believe him, it's impossible for you to counter it because, like, oh, all of my studies are good, even if I'm cherry picking the data. Also, all of the other other studies are actually faulty. They were if if there's a study out there that says like my cure is ineffective or my cure is responsible for killing people, well then those studies were actually faulty on purpose. They designed it so it would kill people so you would not know the truth. I mean people lethal doses of ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine and in fact and in Brazil, the researchers were charged with homicide. He said a lot of crazy shit, but he also said a lot of shit that was not so crazy. Brother, it don't matter that he's like a big time fucking uh, green energy activist, okay? Or advocate. Like, he's literally like, let's preserve nature so that the fucking, you can die from like treatable disease. Like, what do you mean? I don't even think this is a grift. There's a lot of people who are grifting. I think he's just genuinely brain melted. Genuinely brain broken. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he's a fucking Kennedy, dude. Of course he's brain broken. You know, and that was one of those, they, I, I forget whether it was called the Solidarity Study, but it was one of the studies that was commissioned by WHO, paid for by Bill Gates and his people and, um, and that, you know, they were literally giving people four or five times the uh, prescribed doses. You know, there's... A- and anyway, I think we're going to be learning, we're going to be hearing a lot from this guy in the next couple of years, so I thought it'd be worthwhile to familiarize myself with some of his greatest hits. <sighs> Santis, RFK is a 38-month subscriber. Nice. When I was uh, uh, in, in Congress, I remember, you know, Hillary had the, the emails with the classified. And my view was, well, gee, you know, as a naval officer, if I would have taken classified to my apartment, I would have been court-martialed in a New York minute. And yet they seem to not care about that. And is there a different standard for a Democrat secretary of state versus a former Republican president? I think there needs to be one standard of justice in this country. Wait a minute. No, he's not. He's not cucked. He's not defending Trump there. He's actually snarkily trying to... Oh, God. A New York minute. He's actually trying to snarkily attack Trump and Clinton by saying, no, both of them... Both of them need to go to jail, is what he's trying to say. I think it's possible to become like semi-autistic or at least neurodivergent by isolating yourself from others on a long enough time scale. For me personally, ever since the pandemic, I've been feeling neurodivergent. I 
I mean, uh, I don't know. I like, I don't know how to answer that. Like, I, I actually don't know how to answer that at all. Bestie, you're unmasking. Are you, are you talking to him? Okay, got it. Take your mental health seriously. You were going through some shit chatter. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on from this. Stopping criminals not illegal. I will throw up if I watch a fucking Ben Shabibo thing. Okay. Dodgers anti-Satan parade. Signs read, Satan has no rights and stop the last as hunters gather at Dodger Stadium to protest the team honoring the sisters of perpetual indulgence. I don't know what to say to these motherfuckers, okay? 